In this lecture, we will be examining improper integrals of functions that have discontinuities, or what some people call the second type of improper integral. So in this type of integral, we're looking at a non-negative function on the interval AB. We're leaving the left endpoint off of the domain, where F has an infinite discontinuity at X equals A. So think of having something that looks like this. So you have something like a vertical asymptote at x equals a. And the question becomes, is this area below the curve of y equals f of x on the interval a, b, finite or infinite. And it will depend how fast this curve is racing towards this vertical asymptote of x equals a as x approaches a from the right. And we use that idea to define this definite integral or this improper integral in a similar way to how we did this for improper integrals of the first type. And so we have that same kind of picture. But in this case, we will introduce our variable t. And we will calculate the area beneath the curve y equals x over the interval from t to b. That's this depicted area here for this integral. And then once we have that area, that integral, we plug in the x, the endpoints and we'll get an expression involving t. We can then let t approach a from the right. And that will give us the exact area that we seek below the curve. And this is how we define this type of improper integral. So for f of x non-negative on a, b, with an infinite discontinuity of f at x equals a, we define the integral from a to, b, a to b of f of x dx in the way we just wrote, provided the limit exists. So we have a differential calculus piece, a classical uh, definite integral, and then we have a classical limit problem after we have that definite integral evaluated and we get an expression in terms of t. Now note, you can also do this for functions that have discontinuities on the right. So if your vertical asymptote is at x equals b, you would say your integral from a to b of f of x dx, you just kind of go the other way. You say this is the limit as t goes to b from the left of the integral from a to t of f of x dx. So you make the same kind of argument except you're going to the right. right you, you introduce your t, you do your area here, and then you let t slide up to b. That being said, let's see an example. Integral from 0 to 2 or of 1 over the square root of x. And so we know 1 over square root of x looks something like this. And so the area we are looking at is this area here. 0 to 2. And the question becomes, as x approaches 0 from the right, is this function approaching the y-axis quickly enough for this area to be finite? And so using our definition, we break it up. And instead of starting the integral at 0, we start it at t. And we compute this area here. 
So this becomes the limit as t goes to 0 from the right of the integral from t to 2 of x to the negative 1 half dx. And we know our antiderivative for x to the negative 1 half. That would be x to the 1 half over 1 half, and we evaluate between t and 2. So this becomes the limit as t goes to 0 from the right. Simplifying that integrand, we have 2 root x evaluated between t and 2. Or the limit as t goes to 0 plus, we evaluate, we have 2 root t, sorry, 2 root 2 minus 2 root t. Plugging in top and bottom to x. Now we know as t approaches 0 from the right, the square root of t is approaching 0. So this term is approaching 0, and this term is a constant, and so the answer is 2 root 2. So the area below the curve y equals root 1 over root x from 0 to 2 is exactly 2 root 2.